what's going on guys firewolf tech here showing you guys the msi mag 341 cqp gaming monitor this is a 34 inch ultra wide monitor that features next gen qd oled with a 3440 by 1440 resolution 175 hertz refresh rate and a crazy fast 0.03 millisecond response time you'll notice a very slight 1800 r curvature that gives you better viewing comfort and immerses you in gaming Sadly, there's no NVIDIA G-Sync compatibility or AMD FreeSync. Instead, we have the standard Adaptive Sync, which works fine. What makes this monitor stand out is its starting price point of $899 for a beautiful QD OLED panel and even has USB-C connectivity to easily connect your laptop or other devices. So you and I both want to know if this is worth getting. I'll be showcasing PC gaming, PS5 gameplay, MacBook connectivity, and a full unboxing, so stay tuned. I've been using this monitor for a week now and as always, QD OLED just looks so fire. Deep blacks, amazing color, and ultra wide makes it a better experience. I love ultra wide monitors for its 21 by 9 aspect ratio, making it easier to multitask and makes gaming immersive. I do wish the resolution was higher, but with a pixel density of about 110 pixels per inch, you're getting about the same density as a 27 inch QHD monitor and a higher density than a 32 inch QHD monitor. I was a little bit disappointed that this QD OLED panel wasn't glossy, but the anti-reflective coating isn't as invasive as a matte display, so I don't think it's a huge deal breaker, but when you consider that this has a refresh rate of 175Hz, then you might be looking elsewhere. The price is still attractive though, and it does come with a 3 year warranty, which includes burn-in. Now before we get into the fun stuff, let's unbox the MSI MAG 341CQB curved gaming monitor. Pretty excited to see how this looks. Comes in this nice cardboard looking box. Go ahead and drop this down. All right, first things first, we do get a couple of features. Uh, this looks like it should have been on the actual monitor itself. And then here we have the MSI OLED monitor. It's a quick start guide. All right, next we're gonna have the feet portion of the monitor stand. Comes in this really nice grayish color and definitely feels nice and sturdy. Also like to see this wingtip screw here, which should be easy to install. All right, next up is gonna be the arm portion of the monitor stand. You see right over here, we have gaming series, which looks pretty nice. And overall, I like the fact that this portion is, has like a nice matte black, and this portion is gonna be a nice glossy black. And it looks like this uh, opening here is gonna be for cable management, so I'm pretty excited to see how that's gonna look. Next thing you're gonna get in the box is an HDMI cable, a USB option cable that's gonna to connect to your PC. Then we have the AC power plug. Next thing we're gonna have are four screws here and these are some standoff screws. And looking from this paper here, it does say that these are screws for wall mounting your monitor arm. All right, now so far I don't see any other cables here, so that's pretty odd and not a display port cable in sight. All right, now we're ready to set up the monitor here and uh, yeah, there's no additional cable so it looks like you're just getting an hdmi cable which is uh, again to me is very odd but anyways moving on here we're going to install the monitor stand so all we have to do here is connect them together and then we're going to use the wingtip screw here and we're going to screw it in place make sure that's nice and tight and again overall i'm liking the two-tone color here got the gray with the black then we're going to position it we're going to angle it in here, a nice little click, and now we're ready for lift off. All right, this is the back of the monitor here. Let's go ahead and take off all of this plastic. All right, now that we have all the plastic out of the way, my first impression of the design of this monitor is that it looks really nice. I do like the black with the gray contrasts. I think it looks really nice. And I gotta say that my favorite part of this back of this monitor is gonna be the MSI logo over here, which is gonna be their Dragon logo. And I think it looks so fire, I mean, any MSI product that has that dragon, I just think it looks so cool. Um, obviously you have that nice gloss black on the back with the dragon more of a matte black. And then we have lines shooting all across. And then you have MSI on the top right over here. And right on the right side over here, you can see 34 QD OLED. And then a whole bunch of vents here to ventilate the actual monitor and making sure that it's nice and cooled, which is really nice. I also like how thin this panel is. All right, now for the inputs, they're gonna be located on the bottom. All right, starting from the left, we're gonna have two HDMI ports. We're also gonna get a display port cable. We're also gonna get a USB type C, which is pretty awesome. And I also had to peek a little bit closer, but we also get two USB A's that are pretty much um, 
stacked against each other. And then we also have the USB upstream input. And then we have a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. And then on the back and then behind the monitor in the middle, we have a nice little directional joystick. We have two side buttons here as well. LED indicator here is probably gonna be lit up. And then finally we have the AC input which is gonna be by itself. So all of your inputs are on one side and then you have the AC power plug on this side. All right, now that we finally have everything plugged in, let's go ahead and power it on back over here. And there's that gorgeous QD OLED panel, looks absolutely fire. All right, now taking a look at the monitor stand and the setup here, um, I do like the fact that you can route all the cables in this little hole portion here. However, you are gonna see a lot of these cables um, unless if you push the display all the way down then it does a pretty good job of hiding most of it but it's something for you guys to kind of know in case you want to have a super clean setup you know depending on uh, you know all the cables you have uh, maybe you can tuck maybe put like a clip on the back of this if you want it more hidden but otherwise um, it doesn't do a really good job of hiding uh, the cables unfortunately um, I would have liked to see it route a lot higher but moving on, another thing to point out here is that the feet of this monitor stand does stick out very, very high, as you can see here. But I do like the fact that it is on the wide side as well. But as you guys know, it does rob a lot of the space. And just for context, my desk here is about 26 inches deep. If you wanna win back the space, then you definitely wanna use a monitor arm, which I'll definitely be showing later on. But I do like the fact that we have the gaming keyboard and a stream deck connected on the USB hub on the back of the monitor. It does work very well. I'm just not happy with the fact that it's USB 2.0, but it's perfectly fine. I would have liked to see an additional USB though, um, especially so I can use my mouse as well, but it's gonna suffice with just these two. This monitor stand gives you a good amount of height adjustments, tilts, and swivel, and I love how sturdy the stand is. Even when it's on top of my mouse pad, everything feels solid, but it does take up a lot of space. All right, so as you know, the stand takes up so much space, so let's go ahead and take this out. You just have to push up this button here basically lifts out very easily and we have v sub 100 by 100 so it looks like we're gonna have to remove these screws you're gonna take a recent amount adapter you're gonna place it right on top here and then we're gonna screw those four holes in and i like to opt for thumb screws here which is a lot easier to install and as always want to make sure it's nice and tight and now we're ready to put it on the monitor arm all right and thankfully this monitor is not too heavy so putting it on the monitor arm is not that hard All right, and there we have it mounted on a monitor arm. Now the monitor arm that I'm using here is the Ergotron HX, and this is gonna be in the white color. Now this is definitely overkill, but they do have other models that are more suitable for this size and weight, but it definitely looks a million times better floating in the air. All right, and as you can see, we have so much more space now, and it looks absolutely beautiful now, now that it's on a monitor arm. So highly recommend investing in a good quality monitor arm because the stand just pushes the panel way too front and it's going to feel way too close if you have a very short desk like I do. So a monitor arm lets you push the panel all the way back. So now you have so much space on the bottom and then you also have so much more space on the back as you can see, you can you know, move the uh, monitor arm. You can also have better cable management. It doesn't, you can't really see all the cables. Other than that, a monitor arm is definitely gonna come in clutch. Now let's test out the gaming performance of the 341 CQP using my gaming PC equipped with an RTX 4090 and an AMD 7900X, which I have my full build down below. Stay tuned because I'll also showcase PS5 gameplay. Loading up Modern Warfare 3 on this chaotic shipment match is a great experience thanks to the super low 0.03 millisecond response time and 175 hertz refresh rate. I would have preferred 240 hertz but 175 is still fast and adaptive sync works really good. I'm able to set the graphics to extreme and enabling DLSS on quality gives me more than enough frames to take full advantage of this monitor. Even though this monitor is not G-Sync compatible, enabling it in the control panel works just fine and I've been able to enjoy buttery smooth gameplay. The 1800R curvature also helps you see everything on this 34 inch screen. I like keeping the color profile to premium color and adjusting the night vision to strongest when I'm playing first person shooters. But I do recommend exploring each one and see what you like best depending on the game. Now one thing that is super annoying is the intrusive OLED panel protect notification that will pop up every four hours right on the middle of the screen. 
You could be locked in and focused in a battle when this pop-up suddenly comes on. MSI should really update this to either make the window super tiny or move it somewhere on the bottom corner. There's no option to adjust the frequency of this pop-up either, which I think some of you guys might not like. This monitor also has no built-in speakers, which is fine for me since I prefer using PC speakers for better audio. I'm currently using the Adifier G2000 speakers and they work great. Forza 5 looks beautiful on this monitor and QD OLED really makes games look amazing. And if you're switching to OLED from an IPS or VA monitor, you will notice an immediate difference. Taking a break from gaming, the MSI Mag 341CQP has a Display HDR True Black 400 certification, which lets you know this monitor features deep and creamy blacks. I always say once you go OLED, there's just no going back. Colors look amazing on this monitor as well with a 99% DCI-P3 gamut coverage and a factory pre-calibrated Delta E Less Than 2 for high color fidelity. There's many color presets that you can find what works best for you. Brightness levels for an OLED monitor is great thanks to next-gen QD OLED panels. You get a typical SDR brightness of 250 nits and a peak brightness of 1000 nits in HDR. I'm really glad that these OLED monitors are coming with brighter displays because it really improves the overall experience. This QD OLED panel has an anti-reflective coating, which many of you guys might not like and wish it was glossy. It's definitely better than matte coatings and does help with glare, and in my experience, it was perfectly fine. This display also meets two Rhineland low blue light and flicker free certifications for better eye comfort. All right, jumping back into gaming, let's test out the PS5 on a Mac 341 CQP. This monitor doesn't have an automatic input switch, but buried in the settings, you can enable HDMI CEC, and that will automatically power on the monitor or switch to the HDI input that detects consoles, so I really like that. I also like how the monitor automatically defaulted to the PS5's original aspect ratio of 16 by 9, which is what I would recommend since if you change it to ultra wide, the PS5 will just stretch the image. The small black bars isn't that bad since OLED makes it pure black. When you enable 1440p output, this monitor is able to support variable refresh rates all the way up to 120 Hz and supports auto low latency mode which is great. Since there's no built-in speakers, you can get sound output through either headsets or using the 3.5mm headphone jack from the monitor and connect that to a speaker with an aux input. So far PS5 gaming looks amazing on its QD OLED and it's great knowing that you can game on consoles to play games you can't on PC. Another great feature of this monitor is the USB-C port that supports DisplayPort so you can connect your MacBook or laptop with just one cable. It supports power delivery but only up to 15 watts which isn't enough to charge your laptop. Connecting my M3 Max MacBook Pro with just USB-C gives me the full 3440 by 1440 resolution at the max refresh rate of 175Hz and it's great knowing how easy and simple the setup is. I also like the built-in KVM switch which will automatically switch to either PC or USB-C. I just wish it had more USB inputs. You can enable picture by picture to have two separate inputs but I feel like 34 inches isn't enough space to utilize it and it will disable adaptive sync and HDR. If you're worried about OLED burn-in, MSI gives you a nice 3-year warranty that covers panel burn-in which should give you peace of mind. There's also the 4-hour reminder that pops up to remind you to perform a panel protect that lasts about 5-7 to seven minutes. If you play very long sessions or use the monitor for long periods of time, you'll see this very often which I wish you could change the frequency of. MSI has also added additional smart OLED care features like static screen detection, multi-logo detection, taskbar detection, and boundary detection, but if you have adaptive sync on, then only static screen detection will work while the others can't be enabled, which is honestly a waste. To access the menu, you have a four directional button that brings up the on-screen display. The first option is GI, which houses the KVM feature, smart crosshair settings that includes a good selection of crosshairs, and an optic scope that doesn't work with adaptive sync. Next is the gaming section where you can change the game mode presets, night vision to control the black levels, AI vision which lets the monitor control the black levels, refresh rate counter, alarm clock, and the adaptive sync toggle switch. Next is the professional tab that lets you further tweak preset color settings, enable low blue light filters, and image enhancers. Next is image settings to control brightness, contrast, sharpness, color temp, screen size, and display HDR settings. Next we have input source settings, then picture in picture slash picture by picture options, and then navi key that lets you customize menu shortcuts using the four directions. Next you have more settings options and finally the MSI OLED care settings. You can also download the MSI Gaming Intelligence app 
that connects to your PC via USB-B so you can make changes on your PC. This is also where you can update the firmware of the monitor which this MAG 341 CQP does support. Using this monitor for day-to-day -day tasks has been a good experience because the 21 by 9 aspect ratio makes multitasking and using multiple windows easier but I do find 34 inches on the smaller side. You can still use three browser windows split evenly and still be able to work efficiently. Most of this comfort is due to me using a monitor arm since the stand that it comes with just pushes the screen too close to me. As a content creator, I use DaVinci Resolve to create and edit my videos and having an ultra wide makes content creation easier for me. You have a nice wide view of the timeline and can put a whole bunch of tasks without it feeling cramped. It's also a bonus that this QD OLED offers amazing color accuracy. The 1800R curvature also makes the far side of the monitor easier to view and in my opinion is a perfect sweet spot. So is the 34 inch MSI MAG 341CQP worth the price tag of $899? While this isn't the perfect 34 inch QD OLED monitor, the price is very attractive if you're looking to make the switch to an ultra wide OLED. For me personally, I would prefer spending a little more for a higher refresh rate and a monitor that doesn't notify you for a pixel refresh every four hours. I think this monitor is a great option if you're looking to experience beautiful ultra wide QD OLED gaming without spending more than $1,000. If you are interested in getting this monitor or the many tech that you've seen in this video, I will have affiliate links down below, which also helps and supports the Firewolf tech channel. I want to thank you for sticking to the end of this video and would also like to know your thoughts and feedbacks in the comments down below. I hope this video was helpful for you guys and I would love your support with a like, share and subscribe. Firewolf out.